and welcome to the Guy, Sharon, and Clint podcast. Shh, there's a moth in here, and it looks extremely angry. Hi, everyone. Welcome to the Guy, Sharon, and Clint podcast. Thank you so much for joining us on the internet. Yeah! Via cyberspace. What else is going on the internet these days? Um, There's a lot of... You can't even think of anything? I was going to say... Facebook? Cats. Um... I just got into Reddit a big, in a big way. Yeah. Crowd Goes Wild played a video of this dog riding a bike the other week, and I've watched it on you <laughs> loop you about four times. The dog what riding a bike. We're doing the intro to the podcast. Well, why didn't you wait for me? Uh, I said because, I just had to go do something. You could have waited. Why are you in such a hurry? Because you're blazing on fire, and we're worried you might do too, a, too good I an intro. I am a cowboy, and I'm blazing on fire, and I'm blazing on Okay, well, I guess our conversation's over, guy. Um, here's the podcast, everyone. Thanks for even, the podcast. What are you guys even talking about. Guy Shannon and Clint's itch. It is time to play a very, very special game. Yay. A game where we get to <laughs> shut Guy Williams up Celebrate. for at least eight minutes. It is a game that we around here like to call What's in Guy's Mouth. <laughs> Welcome back to the stupidest game show of all time. We've actually got a competitor that wants this to guess is, before it goes in your this mouth. Is, this is a new level of stupidity. This guy called up about five minutes ago, am I right? <laughs> Saying he wants to Six guess. Six minutes ago. So we're going to give him a chance to guess before... What's your name? Chris. Uh, my name's Chris. Hello. Hello. Chris. Who calls Hello. up for a competition before the, before the question's even been asked? Well, I thought, you know, I might as well get in early. You know, I'm in it to win it. <laughs> yeah, that's a great Chris, attitude. It's a great attitude. Let me make, a, let me make a, a, a bet with you right now. Yep, if you can guess bet, what's yep. in my mouth before I've even put it in my mouth, yep. I will come to your house and clean it dressed as a sexy French maid. Yes, that sounds great. The yes, French maid bit is um, totally unnecessary, but that's just a bit of extra it's sizzle that I throw on top. What I've always wanted. Yep. Okay, well, Chris, this is your chance to guess. It's not even in Guy's <laughs> yeah. mouth yet, but what is not in Guy's mouth yet? <laughs> so stupid. Um, maybe Come on, Chris. A potato. potato. Come yep. on, Chris. Have another guess. Come on, mate. You can do better than that. Use your brain. You called up six minutes ago. You've been waiting for this your whole life. Uh, marshmallows. Okay. No. Just, okay. Get out of here, Chris. Get out of here. All right. Let's do it. Put it in. Is it in? Oh. Is it in? It's in. Okay. What is in your mouth? <laughs> <laughs> hey, Bush, you want to have a guess what's in Guy's mouth? Yeah, um, uh, and do you get to win something if you guess right? Not really, but have <laughs> yeah, a guess anyway. You do get a prize, Hamish. You get the satisfaction of, getting, of, of being the champion of what's in... in your mouth. Oh. What is it? a fish. A fish? <laughs> no. A fish? What an appalling guess. Put it back in your mouth. Do you understand how the game What's In Guy's Mouth works? Oh, if, wait, you, if you would like to have a guess, oh, 100 The Edge right now. We'll take one more. Greta, what do you think it is? Crackers. <laughs> <laughs> it's not crackers. It fell out of my mouth because I was laughing. Put it back in. Put it back in. What's in there? We've got one more chance uh-huh. to guess. Uh-huh. What is it? Uh-huh. <laughs> special friend it is time to play our favorite game the game that shuts up guy williams for as much as we possibly can the game is called what's in guys mouth. <laughs> one more time for the good listeners of new zealand guy what's in your mouth <laughs> <laughs> and that's all you're getting. Hey, Grace, what do you think is in Guy's mouth? I think he has got pineapple in his mouth. Pineapple is a pineapple, Guy. Uh, no, no, it is uh, not. Bugger. Sorry, Grace, thanks for trying, though. Uh, Jasmine, give it a go. What do you think is in Guy's mouth? Um, is it a chocolate, chocolate Ferrero Rocher? <laughs> a chocolate Ferrero Rocher. Can you say, it's not that, but can you say chocolate Ferrero Rocher? Uh, no. Uh, 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 uh. <laughs> No, he can't do it, Jasmine. It's actually a nougat for a remote Rocher. Close, though. Very close. No, that's not it. Put it back in. Ava, what do you think? Christmas cracker? A Christmas cracker. No, it's not a Christmas cracker, Ava. Very close, though. He's trying to say so close and very cute. Yeah, you're very cute. Thank you. Thanks for calling, Beauty. I didn't say very cute. Just add that bit on. I said that close. Well, we do think she's cute. Yeah, I was trying to nice you up a bit, mate. Hannah, what do you think it is? (laughs) 
Um, I think it's a chili pepper. A chili pepper? Uh uh-uh. uh. No, not a chili pepper, Hannah. We'll go to Sarah. What do you think is in Guy's mouth? Uh, a frisbee. Uh-huh. <laughs> People are just guessing wrong, so I'll have something in my mouth for longer. Put it back in your mouth. No, Put it back in. Give us, give us an audio clue, guy. <laughs> Sorry, Sarah. Not, don't say it. Maybe move what it is around a little bit. No, take it out of your mouth and move it around. Mm. Okay. Mm. 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 Robbie, what, what do you think? You're the first guy we've had on so far. What do you no, think? No, what about Chris, who caught up to guess no, a potato? I think in this, in <laughs> Before this lot, would even put anything in my mouth. In this lot but of guesses. Yeah. What does that mean, okay? Yeah, okay. Oh, sorry, Robbie. So, now, Robbie, it's all about <laughs> you, babes, okay? What do you think is in Guy's mouth? Oh, it's got to be a Christmas decoration. Oh! it away for you. The bell when he took it out of his mouth. Yeah, yeah obviously. Obviously. So so all the people who guessed like a frisbee and stuff. It could be a frisbee with bells on it, I guess. It's a headband with antlers and bells on it and it's awesome and I'm wearing it now because I'm one of those annoying Christmas guys. Robbie, congratulations. We're going to hook you up with the guy Sharon and Clint prize back from the Edge Million Dollar Prize Back. Congratulations. <laughs> Thank you. That's- hey. That's code for a CD from Chang's uh, backpack. No, it's not. You don't even know it's in there because you're banned from in there. <laughs> Got a cyclone. Topical music in the background. I know, You right? are so fast at finding sound effects. Just don't test me because I'm not ready for any more. And that's enough. I can't stand freaking Christmas songs. Turn it off. Guys, Sharon and Clint. Itch. I almost died today of embarrassment. It was bad. We were sitting in the office, right? Yeah. And I'm sure that both of you two and friend down the speaker, you've had the same thing happen to you before. We were sitting in the office and our boss is... Oh, no, is he listening? Can you just put your head out the window? Probably. He's the boss of this Jeez, radio station. Have a look and make sure Probably he's not listening. listening. Just have I'll a look. Check. I just don't want, I don't want to get him in trouble again. Is he listening? No? No? Okay, no, good. He's not All right, here we go. So... Our boss is a really, really good dresser. Like, really, really good. I would use the word snappy. To the point that Clint asked before, do you think he plans his outfits the night before because they're so good? To which Sharon answered, definitely yes. (laughs) Okay, so (laughs) can I say, don't kiss ass about his fashion sense now that you've screwed up. (laughs) No, we're not. We do actually really enjoy it. We had this conversation for real. Now stop kissing ass. It's getting uncomfortable. Now, he's wearing a t-shirt today that is banana leaf pattern with a whole lot of flamingos in it. <laughs> I, can I say, I like loud clothes and I was a big fan of the t-shirts. And I didn't notice the flamingos at first and he walked past and he was talking to us and I was like, hey Roger, how's it going? And he kept walking and they looked at Clint and I started giggling I leaned over and I was like, just noticed the flamingos and then we started laughing. Then I sat back up and our boss Roger goes, what did you say? Yeah. <laughs> I was like, ah, ah, and he goes, talking about me I heard you say my name and I was like ah and he goes something about my clothes and I was like nah and I was like I was just I was just just, try, I was just trying to say that I just I just noticed the flamingos he's like are you trying to say you don't like my t-shirt I was like no 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 I was just I just I didn't notice them before and, and now, I'm, now I've noticed them I'm like wow there's flamingos amongst the banana leaves and he was like cool nice to know you don't like my t-shirt walked <laughs> off and I was like oh my god everyone was looking at me like you're an idiot hey great news you know how before I said he wasn't listening he was listening to this break oh! as well oh, i no! subbed you in it shout out to roger boss you're awesome shout out guy sharon and clint on the edge i don't know if you guys have seen this but the most awesome thing happened the other day um rick ross the rapper uh was asked about his diet and how he was looking a lot slimmer and uh he gave an awesome shout out to pear like what do you mean like the fruit what? i eat pears now like that Shout out to all the pear. Shout out to all the pear. This is off the hook, and that inspired me to create an exciting new segment for the show. It's called New Shout Outs, where we give shout outs to stuff. Okay. Let's get into the shout outs. First of all, shout out to those t shirts with a pocket square that is a different colour to the rest of the t shirts because they've run out of one fabric or something like that. New shout outs! Next shout out, shout out to people who read stuff.co.nz articles and then log in to write who cares in the comment section. New shout outs! <laughs> oh my god. Let's go to the phones. You want to take some live shout outs? Chris? Chris, what's your shout out? Hi, just saying it's the Chris from before that gets potato. Oh, it god. was an accident. <laughs> Okay. I'm so sorry, guys. Shout out I to Chris who did potato before. It was an accident. <laughs> New shout out. 
Yeah! Um, anyway, I shout out to Caleb and Sam, and Caleb's sitting right next to me. Thank you very much. Shout out to Caleb guys. and Sam. New yeah. shout out. You've had a bloody yeah. nuff now, Chris. Yeah, bye. I, I guarantee we'll hear from Chris again before the oh, end of the show. Most though. definitely. Remember, you can use the hashtag, hashtag new shout outs if you want to do a, um, a shout out on Twitter. Mike B, Texan. Um, shout out to everyone that's still wearing Barker's track pants. Shout out! <laughs> Peter, what's your shout out? Yeah, look, I make a shout out to my fiance, Abby, and to my son, Aiden. Shout out to Cockblocks. Shout out! <laughs> hey, you can't call his fiance. <laughs> you can't <laughs> shout out! <laughs> what about his son? He shouted out to his son. We need more shout outs. Okay, okay, sorry, Peter, sorry. Caleb, who's your shout out? That guy before, Chris, the potato guy. <laughs> shout out again to Caleb. Shout out! No, the shout out was yeah, for Chris right. and the potato. Caleb, because yeah. Chris shouted out to Caleb. Caleb, know, are you. He's right next to me. Oh, God. <laughs> you guys shout need... out to being right next to someone. Shout out! You need shout to. Out. You guys need to get. A couple. It's, it's efficient, too. Two listeners <laughs> per radio. <laughs> this is um, this is such a fun segment. Sharon and Clint, got any, got any shout outs? Shout out to Hillary Barry and Mike McRoberts who are coming in at 4.30. Shout out! Shout out! Shout out. Happy 25th anniversary. Shout out to anniversaries. Shout out! Who's 25th anniversary? TV3s. TV3s. Uh, yeah, shout yeah. out to um, Chickens. Thanks for the eggs. Shout out. And one last uh, shout out from the uh, text machine. Shout out to the rabbit who jumped on my cat. Shout out. <laughs> <laughs> If it people would like to submit a shout out, a new shout out, hashtag new shout outs on Twitter. Okay, we'll watch that hashtag. See if it starts trending <laughs> before the end of the show. Up. Shout out to things blowing up. Review on the new feature. Very loud. Shout out <laughs> to being very loud. Shout out. Shout out, guys. Sharon and Clint. Itch. Dean, who works here at the Edge, he has gone on a trip over in Fiji, and he was there on this big group trip. Oh, this is my Fiji. It meant to be my Fiji music. Once again, you've nailed the music, Clint. <laughs> And anyway, he was staying in this resort, and somehow the balcony kind of collapsed, and he fell a st- once from one story high, landed on some wood or something, and he bas- no, he landed on rocks. Oh, sorry, landed on a rock, and he has a massive hole in his leg, is on crutches, had to be chopped out of Beachcomber Island, and he tried to come home, but he can't come home because of how gross his injury is. So now he's in hospital in Fiji. <laughs> oh, I didn't know that part of it. So the worst part of this is is that his brother is on the trip with him. His brother flew back from London to go on this brother trip. They're yeah. there for one day and now they have to go home because Dean fell off a building. No disrespect to Fiji and hospitals but that would have to be a horrible place to be. And can I also say, I love how you said he couldn't go home because of how gross his leg was. <laughs> Honestly. He, like, he, got, he, got to the, um, he got to the cockpit door and the uh, New Zealand people were like, oh, no, gross. Because gross. <laughs> <laughs> they have to clear you to fly because, you, like, it, because of how serious his injury is. Oh, that's bad. But I just feel so bad for his yeah. brother that's come all the way back. His brother's probably sitting there going, oh, good one, Dean. You've ruined the whole holiday. Oh. You've ruined the holiday, yeah, Dean. Yeah, the holiday's ruined now, Yeah, you and your stupid ripped up leg. you got to ruin the bloody holiday. Oh, I mean, I, I know you didn't do it on purpose, but still, oh, you ruined the holiday. <laughs> and we would like this afternoon to just really get it off your chest that time that someone's ruined your holiday. And it doesn't have to be an injury. It could be anything. It could be someone hooking up with your mum. It could be someone cheating on their boyfriend. Anything with like your that. Mum. We want to know, no, oh, that time someone ruined your holiday. We went to Fiji and uh, we were trying to get back and my mum hadn't updated her passport and we were stuck in Fiji and we had to sleep in the worst hotel I've ever been to in my life. Oh! Mum. You ruined a bloody holiday. Ruined the holiday, holiday mum. Oh. You, you loser. Tell, it, tell us your stories. Oh, 100 The Edge. Or text us to 3343. I'm not going to bring that Fijian music back. I didn't enjoy that very much. <laughs> Neither did I. I felt like I was in a tropical porno. <laughs> <laughs> Which Get I kind of liked, out. but it's then I got over edge. it. We've got Sue on 0800 The Edge. Who ruined your holiday, Sue? Uh, yeah, I was just done a travel course with my girlfriend and we got all inspired went to Club Med Tahiti mm-hmm. and um, we had a great time and she got her foot caught in a propeller oh, God. and Jesus. had it all cut, cut to shreds so mm. had to rush our trip home um, cancelled a couple of days of our holiday and then on the yeah. flew back home with her and then a um, couple of years later I find out that she'd been given a complimentary cruise and she didn't even consider me she took a boyfriend oh, oh. she bloody ruined two holidays she mate ruined yeah. two holidays. She ruined the holidays the holiday Connie what about you beat that who ruined your holiday 
I ruined my own holiday. My partner took me for my first time ever camping. Uh-huh. Went to stay overnight. Ended up so bloody sick. I had to get a helicopter to come get me. <sighs> I had to get winced up through the sky oh, and God. taken back home. We had also had search and rescue come find me. And that was all the next morning. So I Jesus. only lasted maybe just one night. <laughs> you know what? You know it's a bad holiday when you have to be winched at some did form. You, did you really get sick or did you just really hate camping? And you're like, oh, I've got to get a <laughs> helicopter and go home. excuse. I was really sick. What was worse was the helicopter guy thrusting his crutch into me to push me into the helicopter. Okay, hey, hey, <laughs> hey, Connie, if, it were, if you were in the helicopter, you'd winch down and find some <laughs> sick person that probably smells like spew. You'd probably give them a wee hump as well. Plus, it was his holiday. Oh, you I ruined his so holiday, too. Oh, Connie, you ruined everybody's you ruined holiday, holiday, mate. Yeah. Oh, man. Emma, whose holiday did you ruin or who ruined your holiday? Uh, well, the, the airline ruined my holiday. Oh. I was out flight with- well, our flight was delayed eight hours. I was sitting inside of an airport that I couldn't leave. I spent all holiday. my money that I'd saved. Yeah. Oh, and it was only a nine-hour holiday anyway. It's the end of the holiday. Oh, holiday. holiday. Yeah, Emma, they bloody, the bloody ruined the holiday. Oh, holiday. Oh, holiday. Oh, holiday. Oh, holiday. Oh, holiday. I can't believe. What? They ruined the holiday. They ruined the holiday. holiday. Oh, oh we'll have to recover from that. Guy, Sharon and Clint. On the bloody edge. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the studio, celebrating 25 years of TV3 news, it's the mother and the father of the nation, <laughs> Hilary Berry and Mike McRobbins! Thank you very much. <laughs> Sounds so creepy. You kids. Yeah, so creepy. <laughs> See, that's the, the mother thing. Mother and dad of the nation. Because I was trying to figure out what would you guys be? Would you be the mother and father, or would you be the stepmother and father, or would you be the cool auntie and the oh, cool definitely uncle? Definitely the cool auntie and the cool uncle. Yeah, let's yeah. be that. Yeah, yeah. yeah good idea. If you're my cool auntie and cool uncle, then how come you never come to my indoor netball games? <laughs> it's bull crap. Mm, you make a good yeah. point. Sorry. <laughs> oh well, it's great to have you guys in here. We've uh, actually been trying since January to get you guys in, and it took a birthday, but you're finally here. We're so excited. Mm-hmm. To yeah, be we're, here too. We, oh, just, I've just realised we're sitting on the wrong side there, Hillary. I know, it's a bit weird. We, It's like, yeah. you know, how you get used to sleep, uh, sleeping on the yeah. side careful, of the bed. Be careful. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Mum and Dad have <laughs> Mum and Dad have sides I of the bed. Know, but it is really weird. Everything we do, photos, you know, reading together and being like now, yeah. it seems weird me being on this side of you because I'm normally on that side. <laughs> do, you guys, <laughs> do, you guys need, do you guys need to swap? Do you want to swap right now? Yeah, make yourself feel They're actually swapping places right now. I think Hills just wanted to sit next to me. Let's this be honest. Do you guys yeah. do you guys travel everywhere together? Like, did you ride a tandem bike here? Oh no, they don't let us travel together. Because I, <laughs> in case, in case, the royal family, in case yeah. one of us dies, yeah. we can't do the news. Yeah. Yeah. I am so gullible that I was about to go. Really, there was one occasion. <laughs> Actually, yeah. do you know what? I remember one occasion when Mount Ruapehu erupted. That's right. And we sent TV Three just threw everything at it, and they sent about three helicopters down to Mount Ruapehu. That yeah. was the budget for the year. Yeah, that was the budget for the whole year. <laughs> <laughs> and I remember the boss being there and going, no, 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 you two are travelling in different helicopters. Yeah. And there was that moment where he was thinking, if one of you carks it, at what? least I've still got one <laughs> there. That's right. I knew That's what good. that was going through his head. I could see it. If you're like me and you're like Sharonoia, you'd be like, which one of us would he save first if you get the chance? <laughs> <laughs> which, separating which one of us has got the good helicopter? Yeah. 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 If, yeah. I, if I got the bad one, I've got the bad Oh, God, I've got the bad one. <laughs> it's 25 years of TV3 that we're celebrating at the moment. Can I ask each of you what you were doing 25 years ago? Well, I was probably working in radio dreaming of one day getting a big break. Mike yeah. had probably already had his big break 25 years <laughs> <No, months> ago. <laughs> no. I, I, I was working in radio too in Christchurch and I actually remember watching the, the, the very first bulletin and uh, and TV3 because it started in the morning, didn't it? It was all day and they had breakfast news and all that kind of stuff. Hells is nodding like I've got no flash. idea, mate. You're telling the story. That's right, mate. <laughs> it was very flash and I thought, wow, this is amazing. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm. Well, this is cool because I always thought that when TV3 first started that you had to pay for it and it was like, far rich, do you guys have TV3? And then, <laughs> and then it finally came came on and I was like oh no it just turns out everybody no I think at the start TV3 were paying you to watch it they are like please come on check out another channel I remember when it came on to our TV because I was real excited for it to be turned on I would have only been about five years old it was big oh my way to feel old (laughs) how how, how long have you guys been a um, a duo for this is our 10th year reading the reading the 6 o'clock news it'll be 10 in February are we going to have an anniversary dinner oh my god so cute where are we going how do you um, how do you guys stop from hating each other? <laughs> we've, 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 we've been together. Problem on our show. We've been together eleven months, and there's been some shaky moments. <laughs> the funny thing is, though, I, I mean, during the week, I would spend 
more time with this mic than my at home mic. It's very handy they have the same name. I've tried to get Paula to change her name, but she doesn't. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But it is, I mean, you're spending a lot of time together and we're in very close quarters, but Mike is just so chilled. Yeah. You get that. You get that mm. watching him on the TV. He's so chilled. He's so easy oh, to, <laughs> <laughs> to work with. Enough positivity. Enough oh, chit-chat. I'm going to say something nice about Hillary. Yes, Hillary is just a lovely, beautiful person to work with. And uh, who wouldn't want to be sitting next to her tonight? True. Very good. True. Thank you. Thank Actually, you. while we're hearing things about um, Hillary, are we allowed to ask your son what he thinks of you? Ooh. Oh. Hillary Barry's son, Finn, is here. Finn, hey, do you want to put him in you don't, you don't have to. Oh, no. I thought your son was Lachlan Forsyth. <laughs> <laughs> See, to, to us, to us, she's the mother of the nation. But to you, she's just mum. Um, have you got anything to say about your mum? What's she like at home? Oh, she's great. Just the best mum in the world. Oh, <laughs> what a and good your boy. twenty bucks is <laughs> right on its way. Yeah, Thanks very much. Well, this um, interview's been going too well. Too much um, touchy feely, positive stuff. Let's focus on the negatives. You've been going together for ten years now. What are the lowlights? Uh, I don't know that there have been such lowlights. Well, there's Mike, been, there's let me been times you of you. <laughs> <laughs> there, was a time, there was a time when you went out for uh, for, for drinks at the oh. last break oh, of a Friday night yeah. show and then that didn't come f- back and John Camboy had to take your place? I know. Is- and I'll tell you what, though. Yeah, okay, <laughs> oh, so on, on, on Friday nights, you know, they have drinks upstairs in the newsroom and during sport we pop out normally on a Friday, <laughs> have a drink and then come back down the end of the sport. So yeah. Hillary had to stay in the studio for some reason. I think Hamish was out of the studio. So... I popped up, got talking to the boss, missed my slot to come back. <laughs> Hillary was fine because she sat there and said, oh, I don't know where Mike's gone to. John absolutely dropped me in it. He said, yeah. oh, he's upstairs at Friday Night Drinks. That's what he's doing. <laughs> Shambles. That is most Losing. definitely my favourite Millery moment. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. So good. Um, yeah. Hillary, there was a time that you went over to South Africa on a very expensive trip uh, to attend the Nelson Mandela funeral. But um, thank God Nelson Mandela, the good news is he yeah. didn't die. The bad news is you were stuck over there doing stories from the airport, not knowing yeah. what the hell you were doing. Yeah, and look, Mike missed me during that time. Oh, and, then, <laughs> and then when poor Mr. Mandela did die, I had to go back. Oh, so nice. we spent a lot of time apart last year, we actually. We did, actually. We did, yeah. yeah. Oh, well, it's good, so, good, nice. good to see you guys are still going strong, though. <laughs> we have in studio... Mike McRoberts and Hillary Barry. Mm-hmm. We've got to ask, so what is your favourite TV3 moment? Like, since it started, what's the, the funniest thing that you kind of look back on? Because, man, you guys have had some great bloopers. Well, <laughs> I, it is those times that you actually do really look back on and laugh about. And I think that's been the lovely thing this week with all the stuff that they've got out of the archives. Of course everyone focuses on the bloopers. Yeah. But even I have enjoyed looking back at them because it reminds you so of a good. moment in time. My favourite one is the one where Mike talks about people giving up alcohol for a month and then looks at me <laughs> and then carries on. And he didn't mean to but it, he did kind of look at me in a judging way. Uh-oh. I've heard a rumour that when you guys do make apologies for stuff, Mike has to read them because <laughs> Hillary can't read them <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's not a rumor. That's a fact, actually. Well, well, while we're clearing, Battle animal stories on a Friday. Yeah, while we're clearing up rumors, when you have to read uh, stupid stories about the Kardashians or something, mm. it, it, have you ever put your like just? had a diva moment and be like I am not reading this story it's not news it's interesting you should say diva moment Uh. (laughs) (laughs) I've done it once what was the story Mm, mm, well it never went to air so (laughs) no I think we are kind of the the last line of defence aren't we and so and that's you know that's um, that's what we're there for so if we think something's you know a bit off or whatever we'll we'll stand up so we both we were we're a joint little diva then which means pretty much everything else you see us read we've said yeah sure we'll yeah. <laughs> so I, I remember I remember um, Hillary uh, I remember you stomping your foot a little bit when you had to read a story about the map of New Zealand that was grown into an apple I believe <laughs> yeah. and I was harsh about that that was a great story <laughs> <laughs> that was, that a, was a great story there are there, there's some classic moments with words that you struggle not necessarily you Mike it's I think okay. you're a consummate professional oh really <laughs> just oh, me but interesting oh, alright well you well, 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 no, well, 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 I think I'm being set up for something yeah, here you, you you just find something wrong with Mike as well. Yeah. Hills, you actually tweeted about this one the other oh, day. And he's calling me Hills. Oh, interesting. Oh, so he's still trying to be your friend. <laughs> maybe, maybe. So, Here I am sticking the boot yeah, in. You only do that after 10 years, mate. <laughs> Sorry, Mrs. Barry. Um, could you have a, have a go at announcing, pronouncing that um, oh, nice. phrase yes. there? Well, this was a reporter at Radio Live who wrote into his story Antarctic Hunt. 
Target <laughs> and a story about Japanese whaling. I mean, what a setup! Yeah. Antarctic Hunt Target. Antarctic Hunt Target. <laughs> the other one is Last Ditch. Last you ditch. don't want to be saying <laughs> yeah. Last Ditch. Go yeah. real after real quick. after yeah. giving Michael that pri- yes. uh, praise, would you like to have a run at that phrase quickly, Mike? Yeah, go uh, on. What have we got here? Just in the quotation marks Antarctic there. Antarctic Hunt Target. Yeah, oh, it's still he is professional. Oh, yeah. 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 I, I can't talk because um, just recently when we were doing a story about homeowners. <laughs> oh, yeah. New homeowners. That was gold. I made an unfortunate slip. Thank goodness I didn't realise at the time. Yeah, and no one noticed. I mean, no it's not noticed, like it was on from, John you know, About 8,000 people on Twitter. And, uh, yeah. <laughs> um, I'm looking forward to becoming a first home boner real soon. <laughs> <laughs> so me and Clint have been um, arguing about this for about two years. Um, Mike, is that touchscreen you use really a touchscreen? Can TV3 really afford a touchscreen, or is it just someone off-screen pressing the button real yeah, quick? Yeah, pushing fast-forward on a PowerPoint. Well, this is, <laughs> you, you, you're right to ask, and yes, it is actually a touchscreen. You touch it, and wow. it works. No, it's not. You're paid to say that. <laughs> I don't reckon. It's I still don't it's believe it. It's cheaper no. to send you around to do it's interviews true. and <laughs> say it's a touchscreen than it is to buy movies, a touchscreen. But it's actually really good. It does, <laughs> yeah. it does work. Good, I, I am going to jump in and, and vouch for that, because I remember being in the makeup room and Hillary asking Mike, should I wear a skirt today or are you doing the touch stream? <laughs> yeah. So it's a real touch stream. Well, no, you've got to dress from top to toe. Yeah, yeah. what do you wear yeah. under the bottoms? Nothing. <laughs> Naked underneath? <laughs> they've got, they've got Naked a glass deck, so. Yeah. Unless you're doing the touch screen, yeah. in which yeah. case you've got to get dressed. I've, yeah. I've got quite a serious question. This is saying I've always just wondered. I'm not serious, but I'm saying I've always wondered. Um, do you guys read to time? Because you've got to read what's on the prompter and you've got to fill, like, the. T- it's a very tightly scheduled TV show with um, advertisements and stuff. Do you have to go, you've got to read this and a minute or we're over time. Well, it's so. kind well, of the other way around, isn't yeah. it? The, our computer system, our news computer system has a read rate for each presenter. Okay. So I think I'm four or five words per second. So okay. Like that. And it flashes up and says, hey, slow coach, get a move on. <laughs> <laughs> what's your, Mike, what's your read rate? Um, I think it's about 14, whatever oh, that is. Oh, <laughs> oh, she's four or five and oh, you're no, 14. Okay, I'm obviously 15. on a different scale. Oh. Well, I thought it was four or five. Anyway, I don't look Tension at it that often. the news team. Yeah. What quite often happens is that a story might not be ready and so the director will say in your ear as you're reading the intro, can you just slow down a bit? Um, <laughs> yeah. Pan like for time. Is that, yeah. Yeah. Is that yeah. why you have that pen so you've got to fill oh, in extra news? We're really short for time. Whip through this. <laughs> yeah, what is on your papers? Because you've got that. <laughs> you're saying that's fake too. No, I'm just saying you've got the you've got the auto cue, you've got the little computers, and then you've got your papers that you have to shuffle at the end. And be like, good work, Mike. You're nailed live it. on air to thousands and thousands of people. I tell you what, you want as many backups as you can. <laughs> yeah, get. okay. And that the scripts really do have the scripts on them, right? And then we have the computer screen and the auto cue. And have I've got it written on my arm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And we've memorized it. Have you guys ever tried to have a catchphrase at the end? Like you know, Rove used to have, um, "Tell your mother I said hi." Uh, stay classy. And, and, yeah, yeah, stay classy. Because you guys are like, I'm Mike Roberts and I'm Hillary Barry. Good night. No, no, no it's, and now it's Campbell Lye. Oh, no, yeah. And now it's Campbell Lye. That's right. Yeah. No, but that's not a decent catchphrase. No, it's get not. a catchphrase. Yeah, and we could get t shirts. Yeah. Oh, that'd be brilliant. So, um, take it easy, New Zealand, or something like that? Take it easy, yeah. New Zealand. Yeah. <laughs> Go hard. Say that Go hard and kick hard, New Zealand. We can almost wrap up, the, uh, wrap up this interview. Uh, Wait, they have to commit to that tonight. Every single person listening right now has to tune in to TV3 News tonight at 6 o'clock. It'll be great for the ratings. And there's nothing and like a bit of peer pressure as well. And Mike about, and Hillary have to about, end the news on is, Go Hard and Kia Kaha, New Zealand. <laughs> what, about, what about, since it is our 25th birthday, what about Stay Classy TV3? Stay yes. Classy. Yes. 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 Okay. Okay. Tonight, tonight, we make that pledge. Hand on heart, we yeah. will say that tonight. <laughs> and I just want you to know, we're going to call you <laughs> tomorrow. <laughs> we'll do it. Hand on heart, we'll do it. I promise. Mike yes. and Hillary, thank you so much for coming in. Congratulations on 25 years. You're still second to Prime News first at 5.30. <laughs> Maybe move yourself forward to 5 o'clock later on. You can see them at 6 o'clock on TV3 tonight. It's Mike, Big Roberts and Hillary Barry, ladies and gentlemen. Oh. Oh. Guy, Sharon and Clint. On the edge. And you can ask anybody Go ahead and ask anybody Yeah, you can ask anybody Anything, anything, anything Ladies and gentlemen, we have an AMA with New Zealand's most lovely paparazzi, might I say. Sorry for giving you a hard rep already, Nori. It's Nori! Hey! Hey. Hey. Poop, that is. If you don't know...
know Norrie. He's very well known around Auckland for being the man who is at every uh, party with New Zealand crap celebrities, mixing and mingling, rubbing shoulders with the Keisha Castle Hughes and the who are the big celebrities in New Zealand? The, the Jamie Ridges, Siobhan Ruakiri's, and stuff like that. Yeah, she's, may, she's one of the best. She's a good looking girl. Okay, okay. Yeah, yeah. You may also have heard of his website, The A List, as well. You can look that one up if you want to check it out. We called you a paparazzi. Yeah. Do you find that offensive? A little bit because uh, paparazzi is the sort of guy who stands behind bushes and you know books, uh, looks for people and takes photographs when they're not expecting it. Yeah. yeah. I'm right up in your face. I okay. yeah. actually ask you your name. Do you ask yeah. Do you ask permission to take your photographs? Yeah, I'm quite polite like that. I just say, yeah. excuse me, can I take a photo? But nobody's ever said no. Okay. Well, a couple of people, but not But really. you know the game, don't you? So if anyone oh, yeah. does have questions about paparazzi life or how it works, we can ask those to you? Yeah, just fire away. I'll do my very best. Well, awesome. we've already got some on the phone for you, Nori. Jennifer, what would you like to ask? I would just like to know if you've ever been hit by a celebrity for doing like anything oh. to that. Yeah, I've, I've not been hit by, but um, there's been a couple of them giving me the burnt and giving me the fingers and all that sort of thing for taking can photographs. You, can, you, can you divulge who's giving you the fingers? Uh, Bo Ranga. <laughs> um, Didn't she ever go at you, Sharon? No. Oh. No, I've so, never had a run with that. Oh, 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 she just pulled the bud at me. It was really good. Really good photo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because you get the photo of the finger, right? And yeah. then it's gold for you. Yeah, and then who's the one that used to be in um, Outrageous Fortunes? The uh, the mother one. Uh, oh, Robin um, Malcolm. Robin Malcolm, I. She was putting on her makeup once and I was taking photographs and she just gave me the two fingers like that. <laughs> oh, I yeah. love Robin Malcolm. <laughs> Great shots, though. That is yeah. awesome. Tony, what's your question for Nori? Um, have you ever got lucky with any of the stuff? Because I, I have seen you at parties, Nori, <laughs> and the girls just yeah. all over you because well, they want to get in about They just want to be in photographs, yeah. that's all. But also, I've seen Guy like pretty much begging to get his I'm photo there taken. every day, yeah. 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 Yeah, yeah. Have you ever slept with Guy, I think is the question. <laughs> no. Um, no comment. <laughs> oh. Nori, no, this is actually an AMA, so you can't say no comment. Right, You've got to be more diplomatic it. than that. Have you ever yeah. hooked up with anyone whose photo you've taken? <laughs> <laughs> He's laughing a lot. Uh, read my memoirs. Oh, <laughs> oh, 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 oh there it is. <laughs> we are we are doing an AMA with Nori, who is New Zealand's best known celebrity photographer. I like calling him a paparazzi. He doesn't like that term. He um he has been doing this for thirteen years and has probably amazing stories to tell. Nori, are you New Zealand's only paparazzi? Oh, there's a, how that paparazzi one again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're, we're bending <laughs> yeah. around, mate. Okay, I'll be re- honest. Let me you. rephrase. Are there paparazzi in New Zealand? There's two paparazzi in New Zealand. Really? Are they, are they based in Auckland or? In Auckland, yeah. Could I just grab a camera and say that I'm a paparazzi, though? Well, you'd have to uh, prove your worth. You'd have to get the photographs. And uh, these guys do okay. work very hard. So when, say, like, you know, the real famous pictures of Lord and mm. her bikini with yeah. her boyfriend and stuff, yeah. do you, as those sorts of photos, are they actually stalked out paparazzi photos? Oh, yeah. Or would people ring ring ahead and go, hey, we're going to be at the beach if you want to come get some snaps? <laughs> it sometimes happens in the UK where you can set things up like that, but it doesn't really happen so much over here. It doesn't happen. It, it, it did happen once when I papped someone, but I won't get into details, but it did happen once. I'm going to get, can I guess who it was? No. Okay, guess. Yeah, go, go. Was it a relationship that involved somebody Bill Williams? No. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay, <laughs> right, done. okay. But okay. Um, um, uh, the paparazzi guys who work over here work very hard and they do a lot of groundwork and they just follow people like you wouldn't believe. So I got, I got to get, ask you to estimate because you know yep. what's, what's the name of the guy who did the Lord phot- photograph that was so oh, Simon, Simon Ronte. Simon. Yeah. Do you think if you took a photo like that of Lord where there's a huge backlash about it, <laughs> would you feel guilty? Would you feel bad if you took a photo like that? Um, I'll, to, I'll be perfectly honest I've thought about this um, that is not my bag I, I wouldn't f- Simon is he, that's all he does yeah, yeah that's how he makes his money you yeah. know what I mean how, that much, is not, oh. how much would a photo, photo like that be worth <sighs> I have no idea how much you got for that take a, but take a stab uh, like New Zealand's most famous celebrity in yeah, a compromising in position it would be in the thousands. Wow. Tens, wow. Of, th- tens of thousands? No, I don't think so. What, no. about, what, do you, what about like the first ever photo of Richie McCaw and his girlfriend Gemma Flynn having a pass at a bar? <laughs> um, that's like that's kind of photo. limited. Yeah. Because it's only um, uh, in, of interest in New Zealand. Okay. Yeah. Right. It's not okay. worldwide, you know. Uh, so they could, they could be going tongue diving and nobody in the world would really care about it. Who yeah. is, <laughs> it it's probably Lord, but who is who would you say is New Zealand's most valuable celebrity to get a photo of? Um, I would say Lord at the moment. Yeah. Who has it been in the past? God, that's been really hard because not really anybody has had that huge global reach. Yeah. She's yeah, a phenomenal. Lot of crap phenomenal. Yeah. <laughs> she has just gone like bananas. Yeah. She's like one in a million. Estimate, Nori, how many photos of Siobhan Ruakiri have you taken? Because <laughs> I guess okay. 10,000. 3,567. <laughs> wow. <laughs> We've got some calls on the phone that want to ask Nori a question as well. Michaela, what's your question? Oh, 
Um, I want to ask you, how much do you get paid just for taking photos of celebrities? Ooh, it's very, very Ooh. personal. That's a personal one. Is the tax department listening? <laughs> um, I don't take ph- photographs of pan- um, um, celebrities on a one-to-one basis. It's usually uh, events and things like that that I'm uh, commissioned to, to cover. So you won't do Chang's glamour shot? <laughs> no, no, no. Can, okay. I ask you this, can I ask you this now, right? Yeah. How much does, like... So I've got the cover of uh, a, mag- a woman's magazine right now, and they've yeah. got a photo of Brad Pitt and Angelina. Yeah, yeah. Like, these, photo- these photos are known for costing... Worth being worth tens of thousands of dollars. Yeah. Like a, 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 an intimate photo like that, how much would that be worth? Let me see. I've not really had a look at that shot. Um, Just like, you know, pap shots. See, pap shots like that, there's been a big backlash about taking photographs like that up in balconies. Yeah. You know? I yeah. Mean, going back to the Rihanna one that was taken over here. I mean, yeah. um, the pap rats are getting a really bad name and taking photos photographs of that yeah. doesn't do anything for their uh, reputation but yeah, they don't but care about their reputation would anyway. it be worth $10,000? no, no way no way? Oh, okay. nah. so I thought it, I thought it nah. was alright and nah. Sharon what is your question? where is the most popular place for celebrities to be photographed in New Zealand? good question that's oh. a good question uh, let me think think now probably the music awards is really good yeah anything to do with the, the music industry the entertainment industry is really good um, what about just on like a normal day to day if people wanted to go save Lincoln Road if oh, they wanted the to go celebrity with the spotting. bananas yeah. pointing up really interesting um, Nori had a really good point um, before is that if you're in Sydney there's places oh, celebrities yeah. go they go yeah. to Bondi yeah. and they go yeah. downtown in New Zealand celebrities often just stay in their hotel room because exactly. there's nowhere to go in Auckland yeah. Yeah. exactly I went over to do the MTV awards in Sydney and um it's like a paparazzi's paradise. There's people over there who even look famous. Yeah. You know what I mean? You go down the beach anyway. and he goes, I'll just shoot anyway. Just and you can ask anybody. Go ahead and ask anybody. Yeah, you can ask anybody. Anything, anything, anything. We're interviewing Nori, who is the celebrity photographer for New Zealand Herald. He also has a website, alist.co.nz. If A-list. you want to do you mean A-list? <laughs> if you want to check out his sweet ass photographs. Um, we're going to the phone lines now, I believe. Yes, we are. Adam, what is your question for Nori? Um, I was wondering, from the sounds of it, his market's really small. I'm wondering why does he live here? Yeah, that's a good question, mate. No, I love New Zealand. I wouldn't live anywhere else. And you can tell by my accent, I'm from Scotland, and you're obviously from yeah. England. So yeah, you, that's you, right. Yeah, you know the difference, mate. The, to be honest with you, there's not a hell of a lot of celebrities over here, not complete compared to back in the UK. You know, we can make a really good living at it. That is yeah. probably because I don't make a living at paparazzi. I'm more a social celebrity photographer. I get paid to go to events and parties. Yeah. In the past, oh God, I don't know, 10, 12 years, I've probably been about 4,000 parties and never paid for a drink. So <laughs> <laughs> that's really good, you know. Do you do, do, you do um, uh, dry, what's it, Dry July? No, what's that? You, when you don't drink for a whole month. No way, man. <laughs> <laughs> it's a waste of a month, isn't it? When you're, phot- no when you're photographing Bic Runger 10 times a week, mate, you've yeah. got to get real pissed. Oh, yeah, yeah. Are we, are we heart start or just keep you going, you know? What I, is the worst behaviour behavior you've ever witnessed oh. from a paparazzi? From a paparazzi? Yeah. Because you were telling us a story before about your friend that uh, managed to get a reaction out of Heath Ledger. Oh, this is an old guy I used to know back in, um, in Sydney. He was one of the best paparazzi guys uh, going. He, he passed away a few years ago but um, he actually squirted uh, Keith Letcher on the uh, red carpet with a water pistol oh man you know, and uh, just to get a rise out of him and uh, he get banned from red carpets and everything and all of that <laughs> do you yeah. think it's quite because I've just noticed especially this year that the paparazzi have like become quite disgusting in the oh, way terrible. that they get do you find that it's getting worse? it's getting worse because what they're trying to do is they're trying to get a rise out of the, the celebrities the worst the, the worst photograph they can get or um, they hit yeah. them or something like that yeah. Yeah. you'd expect in America you get a lawsuit against them. Mm. But you've got to remember, like like I said before, there's two paparazzi in New Zealand and there's not really that many celebrities. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Good you know point. I mean? That's true. There's, there's almost none, some would say. There's, there's one know. paparazzi to every celebrity. <laughs> yeah, there you go, mate. Let's finish yeah. on a fast three. Yeah. Um, first question, just quick answers. Um, how far is your range of your lens? Like, how far can you photograph someone from away from? Oh, I use a 70 to 200, so it's kind of telephoto lens. It's not really that far. It's not a big mega 600 mil lens. So those ones overseas, like, how far... What range? What type oh, lens they have? use? Big lenses. So I mean, the photographs taken of um, the royals in France was probably six hundred, even with a doubler on it. Six hundred yeah. meters. Six hundred millimeter lens. No, but how far can it shoot? Oh shit, mate! Um, way over by the sealess buildings. Are we over there? Like a kilometre. Wow. Oh, probably easy. Uh, hey, who, who, if you could photograph anyone in the world, who would be your dream pap? Dream pap. Good God, who would that be? 
I really like Angela Jolie. I know it's real cliche, but she's, she's retired really now, so you're doing your chances over, really. Oh well, that that would put the money up then, wouldn't yeah, it? Yeah, 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 good person. Yeah. And what is your favourite moment as a paparazzi? What's your what's your highlight? I love big events. The bigger, the most glamorous events. That's the ones I really, really love. I love it when people get dressed up, really make an effort. There's a lot of good vibes on the red carpet and things like that. I love Finally, that. do you recommend it to young people? Is it a good career to get into? It's a good career. Um, you've got to work hard at it. You've got to um, sacrifice a lot. There's, I've missed birthdays, wedding anniversaries and all So no, because you don't want anyone cutting your lunch. Exactly. Fuck <laughs> it off. Don't get another job. You were wonderful. Thank you so much for answering our questions. Pleasure. It was fascinating. That was Nora. Nora, everybody. Thank you, everybody, who called in with the questions. This has been a Guy, Sharon and Clint Ask Me Anything. Oh, guy, Sharon and Clint on the urge. Every day there are big issues that face our community and our country and that's why we rely on Clint to go out there, take it to the streets and ask the big questions. Clint Roberts is... Sorry. Welcome to Taking It to the Streets, and thank you, Guy. We are taking big issues, and only big issues, to the streets. What are the issues? Do we need some tissues? Today, I thought we would ask the good people of Auckland City what song they would sing if they were going to audition for X Factor. That sounds like such a great question to ask, Clint. Where did you get the idea for that? <laughs> Sharon gave me the idea. Oh, Fine. wow. It's like she was fishing sounds for it like, there. It sounds like Sharon Casey was delegating to the streets. Because the first question I asked, no one wanted to answer. <laughs> What was the first question you asked? <laughs> Do you scrunch up your toilet paper or fold it? <laughs> what are you, for? Oh, my God. Well, I got a different question anyway, and this is the question that I took to the streets. <laughs> if you were going to audition for X Factor, what song would you sing? We don't need another hero. Yeah, sing it. We just want to find our way home. Don't know if that's the words, but keep going. I don't think that's the words. Your X Factor audition song, what would it be? YMCA. How does that song go? <laughs> <laughs> Quick question, if you were going to audition for X Factor, what would your song be? Not something by Nickelback. What would your X Factor audition song be? It'll be an Eagles Desperado. I'll start you off. Desperado. What? I don't even know the words. We- Why don't you come to your senses? You've been out riding. Senses. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. <laughs> Sir, if you were going to audition, what would your song be? Let's rock out some Frozen with Let It Go. <laughs> oh, we've been waiting for this. All right, the floor is yours. Let it go, let it go. Can't hold it back anymore. <laughs> anaconda. My anaconda don't. <laughs> My anaconda don't. That's all I know. Okay. <laughs> So if you were going to audition for X Factor, what song would you sing? Go f*** yourself. Rog from The Rock, what are you doing on the street? Well, I'm a man of the streets. Uh, a lot of you know, a lot of stuff goes on on the streets. So You're a man of the streets? Yeah, yeah. They, you want to know what the people are saying. You want to head to what the people are saying on the street. That's why I'm on the street, to see what the people are saying. If you were yeah. going to audition for X Factor, what oh, song would you sing? Every Rose is its thorn. Though it's been a while now, I can still feel so much pain. Like a knife that cuts through the wound heals. But the scar, that scar remains. Fantastic. Thank you, Rog. Good on you, mate. Whoever you are, mate, fantastic. <laughs> I love you on ZM. <laughs> Rog, Jay. That was good value. Any chance, you know, Rog came to my wedding, wasn't even in the wedding band, and I was about to have this romantic um, dance with my husband. Rog came up, took my garter off my leg, and then got up on stage and sung that song with my garter around his head. Well, <laughs> that happened, and then I found him on the streets. That and was Taking It to the Streets by Clinton Roberts. Street. Oh, 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 oh. Taking It to the Streets. Actually, took it to the streets. If, if Sharon could sing on X Factor, she'd sing the Taking It to the Streets theme song. <laughs> no, wasn't it sucks for 16? Guy, Sharon and Clint on the edge. Oh, guys, our mate's here to visit us again. Look. Who's our mate? Look. Please don't be Santa. Santa's here. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, let's go get him. Hang on. Santa. Do you have to go get him or can he just come in? Santa. Why can't Santa get in? Come on in, Santa. He's too fat to get in the door. Uh-oh, it looks like Santa didn't make it. G'day, guys. Oh, no, he did oh, make he it. Did wow. Make it, wow. Hey, Santa. G'day. How's so, it going? So it's so nice to see you again after you were here yesterday. Oh, I almost didn't make it in today, guys. Oh, that would be a real shame. People would be gutted if you didn't come in, Santa. I know. Well, I have to make the effort or people think I don't exist or something, but I'm here. What I'm a the... bit sad, though. Why are you sad, Santa? Well, a lot of people have been getting into organic <sighs> toys this year. 
and there's been so many good boys and girls for a change, and I've given myself tennis elbow by making wooden horses. Oh, no, Santa. So I can't do any hammering today. Mrs. Claus is a bit sad about that. No, 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 no. What, no, Santa not... Claus can make love to Glint? <laughs> <laughs> Don't be sexist. Santa, you didn't have to... Ca- it's not sexist to say that Santa Claus <laughs> oh, should be uh, R-rated. I'm sorry, guys. Should not I'm, be R-rated on the radio. I'm just a bit upset about okay. the whole elbow thing. Well, what thing. can we do to make it better for you, Santa? Well, I think if all of your lovely listeners at home could make a wooden horse each and send it to me <laughs> at Santa. the North Pole... It's a reasonable it thing to really <laughs> Oh, Santa. Santa, what's going on, mate? <laughs> I've got a cold as well. Because well, you keep going from hot to cold to hot to cold when you well, come to the edge and then go back to the North Pole. That's because I need maybe to you come take and a see my and friends at the edge. Well, you anyway, can take a day I'm off and not come and see us. I don't have much time, but I need everyone to send me a wooden horse. Okay. And send it in. Cool. Okay. Um, are you are you all good? Can we go back to regu- can we resume regular broadcast now? Yes, I've got a physio appointment. Can you? <laughs> <laughs> hey, thank you, Santa, for joining us. No worries. No, please piss off now. See you all on the twenty fifth of November, children. I'll be there on it's Christmas December. Eve. It's December. Christmas is in December, not November. Shit. <laughs> See you all on Christmas Eve, children. Twenty fourth of December. Twenty fifth. Also, that's also Sharon's birthday. Don't forget to send her a present, everybody. Bye. Bye, Santa. Bye, Santa. Ho, 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 and a bottle of rum. <laughs> That's not it. See you, Santa. Good to see you, mate. <laughs> Looking good. Seamless. Well, I'm a little bit upset, guys. I'm back. <laughs> just to give me, it a bit Santa. Of, just to give it a bit of context, we had Santa in the studio I'm earlier. I'm still here, guy. What am I, San- a fish? Santa's right here right now Open in the studio, eyes, believe buddy. it or not. Um, he oh, just man. received a bit of negative feedback from a naughty boy. Yeah, there's a naughty boy on the text machine. <laughs> that said... <laughs> check, check, Clint almost nailed the music again. Well done, Clint. He said, and I quote, um, kill Santa with fire. <laughs> <laughs> that was a real text message. So I <laughs> reckon... I feel a bit sad about that. I don't understand. I reckon, Santa, right now we call him up and see if he'll say that to your face. All right, and don't worry, children, I won't. I'm... Perfectly fine. Be aware, if we do this, we'll have to do it instead of scandal. Oh, Sans- no. Sans- I think this is the scandal. <laughs> Someone's <laughs> trying to ruin Christmas. Okay. <laughs> Santa, what did the text message say? What did it say? It said, Ugh, enough with Santa. Kill him with fire. <laughs> Hello, children. <laughs> How are you? All right. So, ringing on behalf of uh, Santa here. No, you are Santa. No, wait, I am Santa. <laughs> <laughs> it's Santa here. Yes. Just ringing about your text message. Would you like? Yes. Well, how will I? How do I specifically kill myself with fire? <laughs> Um, perhaps you could take all those wooden horses and put them in a big pile. <laughs> well, the thing is, is that they're for the children. <laughs> well, the naughty children's wooden horses, then. Right. And then what do we do about Christmas next year? If I've gone down in a blaze of horse. <laughs> we would organise the genuine Santa to come along. Sounds good. Hey, thanks so much for your text message. It was so lovely to hear. <laughs> Indeed. Thank you for calling, Mr. Santa. Not a problem. Thank you for realising I am the real Santa, you naughty little boy. All good. <laughs> hey, cheers, bro. Thank you. Thanks for your... um. Your your very terrifying text. Thank you. <laughs> well, I feel better. Yeah, thank you, Santa. And children, <clears throat> don't forget I'll be seeing you on Christmas. Continue to be the best behave for your parents, and I'll stock your stocking. Thank, thank you, Santa. Thanks, hey, Santa. That's okay, Cliff. <laughs> no. <laughs> move on, move on, move on, move on. Well, I'm going to change the next. This is special now. half hour. Guys, Sharon and Clint. Itch. We've got Kate on the phone right now. Kate, you have registered on the edge.co.nz for a study link competition because you didn't get your A into G and get organised for something. So tell us your story. What did you miss out on? Oh my goodness, I can't remember what I said. <laughs> you're, hey, Kate, this is big right now because you're a finalist in the competition. This is your chance to win. What did you miss out on? Oh my goodness. I'll give you a clue. 
It involves naps and it involves <laughs> dinner. <laughs> oh, okay, yes. So, I uh, for the first year at uni this year, I have this really bad habit of uh, napping quite constantly. Uh, I feel you, and Kaylee. I fall asleep quite often and I've missed dinner quite a few times. <laughs> so, yeah. Okay, so why did you miss dinner? Tell us what time you're going in for this nap. So, we'll be going in like, oh, I don't know, three ish. Yeah, oh, and, uh, can I say prime nap time because you're getting late afternoon sun. The bedroom is already warmed up for you. Mm. Very easy to keep it's, sleeping at that time, isn't it, Kate? It's just a beautiful day. It's in Christchurch as well, so mm. it's a nice time. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And after a hard day of uni, you know, I've got to have a nap, and then <laughs> the nap just doesn't stop. And so I, my, my, brain's hurt, my brain's hurting a little bit, Kate. Have you called in to the Edge Radio Station to try and win a prize because your problem <laughs> is that you fall asleep in, instead of going to dinner time? Uh, yeah, that's the one. Paul Campbell live. Let's do a special report. This is easily the worst crisis anyone in New Zealand has ever had. Kate, can I ask what, what you want us to do about it? Like, what is the solution? What would you like to win? I don't know. Uh, is it dinner? Some matters vouchers, so every time I miss dinner, call CNN. We'll get you some he- something healthy, otherwise you'll end up being a big fatty. <laughs> Kate, we've taken entries where people want um, trips around the world. They want uh, a replacement 21st birthday. And you'd be happy with a couple of vouchers for Maccas? I'm a, I'm a simple girl. I tell you what, you're a finalist. You are. You're, <laughs> finalist. you're in the finals. You're in the finals, Kate. Cool. <laughs> Thanks so much. Sorry for waking you up. Go back to sleep, mate. Back to sleep, babs. All right, I will. I'll see ya. Bye. <laughs> Oh, man. All right. Here's George Ezra. It's Blame It On Me. If you want to register for that comp, there's still time. You can go and do it at the edge.co.nz. Kia ora study link. Go and get your student loan sorted, everyone. Uh, Guy, Sharon and Clint. Edge. At 4.30 today, we had Hilary Barry and Mike McRoberts from 3 News on the show because they're celebrating the 25th birthday for TV3 today, which is very exciting. Happy birthday, TV3. What can you buy, TV3? Um, um, new rabbit ears. Home and away, back again. <laughs> no, we don't need it, mate. We've got real good shows like X Factor coming next year. Oh, sick. It's going to be cool. Now, we had these Didn't two... say John on bed at 10, but anyway, that's the oh, way it goes well, that's sometimes. still pending funding. <laughs> <laughs> they haven't decided on that one yet. <laughs> Those balls are up in the air. <laughs> <laughs> we'll get back to you, mate. Oh, don't call us. We'll call you. Um, now, back to Hillary and Mike. We asked them and we set them a challenge. We're at the it's end. It's a toss up between that and season two of The Ridges. <laughs> <laughs> I'll go Ridges, to be honest. So would I. Um, anyway, back to me. Okay. Hillary and Mike came in and they promised us at the end of the news tonight, so it's 6 55, they would do this. What about since it is our 25th birthday, what about Stay Classy TV3? That if and, and so that is a promise that's been made to us by Mike McRoberts himself and to you, Edge listeners, and really because you've been listening to this show, you're the only one who'd be in on the gag. Yeah. What I like about this is it is re- there is a realistic chance of it happening. Like the original idea we pitched out to him was, "Cheer, boy! Thanks for watching. <laughs> <laughs> Get like, some cake in ya." So we are really hoping this actually happens. So tune into TV Three News just about the end of our show at six fifty five. We will forgive you for not joining us for five minutes. As soon as that has happened, though, you have to go back and listen to Marty and Steph on the Edge Night Show. Definitely don't watch that John Campbell guy. But go on and, and watch <laughs> it and see if it happens. We're going to call them on the show tomorrow to make sure they did it. And if they didn't do it, we've got a punishment in line. Yep, perfect. Guy, Sharon and Clint, next on the show. Thank you. Love you, the- Today's Guy, Sharon and Clint podcast is brought to you by Grass. Perfect for gardens and sport. Get Grass today from your friendly Grass vendor.